Salvador is a battlefield fought over by warring street gangs. A third of the city's population has been robbed at gunpoint, beaten or raped. Someone's been wounded by gang members. We're on our way to the scene. The victim was a policeman shot in the leg. There are up to 50,000 gang members, a new army of the disaffected. Youngsters who feel our modern, westernized world has passed them by and left them outsiders. They've decided it's time to strike back, to live their lives according to their own rules. In San Salvador, the two biggest gangs are the 18th Street Gang and their deadly rivals, the MS Gang. They're offshoots of the American gangs that go by the same name. Gangs rooted in the Salvadoran community in Los Angeles. This place is full of gang members. They keep bringing them in. There are 13 people in that one cell of 18th Street gang members. The police took four men out of the cell. They'd been arrested for killing a bus conductor that very morning. They denied they'd shot the man, but now they've been charged and are awaiting trial. Entonces se puede ver que al menos ahora en a policewoman briefed me on the latest murders and robberies. I asked to meet the family of the murdered bus conductor. So we've got a concentration of 18th here and MS here, and this is another local gang called Mau Mau. They lived in a dangerous part of town. I was given an escort. We were in the territory of the MS gang. Each year, one in every thousand Salvadorans is murdered. The murdered man's family were praying for his soul. In the 80s, the civil war here between left-wing guerrillas and an American-backed dictatorship cost 80,000 lives. There's democracy now, but still no peace. Rodolfo Lopez was murdered for five dollars. This is the wife of the dead man. She, what she's been telling me is that he wasn't a gang member. He was 24 years old, she's 22. She has this two-year-old child. Well, he'll be two in another month, and she's pregnant with another. And about two weeks ago, her husband was threatened by gang members who shot him today. They shot him in the chest and then the second bullet got him in the head, so he didn't have a chance. Thirty Ninth Avenue, near the centre of San Salvador, is one of the front lines. This area here is all the 18th gang, but that main road up there is what separates them from the MS, who live on the other side of the road. So that's sort of the demilitarized zone or the no man's land, but anything can happen there, and that's where often people get killed. It was early morning as I walked along La Línea, a disused railway line running right through no man's land. That's the safest time of day because the gangs are sleeping. Police helicopters circled the city. This is a country mired in poverty. One fifth of Salvadorans have emigrated. To most of the six million who remain, it seems our globalized world has passed them by. That's why youngsters join the gangs. It's a way of telling that world to go to hell, of dancing to their own tune instead of someone else's. Nearby, I met some 18th Street gang members preparing for the new day. In reality, we all give life for other people. So that in other realities, we understand. He said, we're in this gang until death. When you get into a gang, you know what you're getting into, and we give our lives for our family. This is our family and our neighborhood. He says, we can sell drugs, we can rob, we have enough. This is a tribal world of secret signs, where allegiances are branded onto bodies, where killing pushes you up the hierarchy. 
signifies the 18th group, the SA Ocho. And this is the leader of this gang, who was 28 when he died. Oh. They expect to die young. Chances are, they will. He said it's a tit-for-tat war. It's a rival gang who shot him. They shoot back. It goes on like that. Having made contact, that night I visited the house where the gang members live. Buenas. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. 22-year-old Alex was calculating whether the gang's youngsters needed to go onto the streets that night to sell drugs. So he's working out the household expenses and at the top he's got how much food is costing and their bills and this is how much they've brought in today. It's the best, it's $50 or so and this includes the proceeds of robberies or selling things that they've stolen as well as what they, the drugs they've sold. Casparin is 13. His parents are working illegally in the United States and he's run away from his aunt's home. So this stone of crack, you smoke and it makes you high, one hit. ¿Y cuánto vale? Esta vale diez colones. So that's about one dollar. And this, ¿cuánto vale? Cinco. Cinco colones. So this is about 50 cents or so, and that's grass marijuana. The guys are about to go out and do some more business. They've got a bag of marijuana there. Some rocks as well, and they're, they're about to go out and start selling. El Salvador is on one of the supply routes that traffickers use to move drugs from Colombia to America. It's easy for the gangs to buy drugs from the traffickers, both to sell on the streets and to use. Gang life gives these youngsters the family they crave. Drugs and violence then destroy them. Gangs aren't a male preserve. These girls are also members of the 18th Street Gang. The eldest is 17, the youngest 13. 18. Death is always with them. She had that cross tattooed on her back when one of her friends in the neighborhood was killed by the MS. ¿Y ustedes matan? Do you kill people? Sí. Ellen said she'd tell me the story. But first she fetched what she said was the murder weapon. Ellen's parents work in New York. She's run away from her relatives. She said they were in Soyapango and they saw a member of MS. They chased him, they stabbed him in the back. He fell down to the ground. They got a rock and they crushed his head in. Then they threw the body into a ditch. Then they came back here to wash their hands because they were covered in blood. And she said, revenge is sweet. Pero quién? Quién has matado? There's absolutely no logic to what they're saying. They're saying the other the other gang is the enemy, they're false, they're not real Salvadorans. They say that the 18th Street, we're the originals, it's what it means to be Salvadoran. The gangs arrived from America. Every week for the past 10 years, the US has returned illegal immigrants to El Salvador. Of the 35,000 now deported, a third have been criminals, many of them members of the big Los Angeles gangs. It's these men who've brought the 18th Street Gang and the MS Gang to El Salvador. Thousands of people are deported back here every year. And although we've only been here a few days, at this stage we probably know San Salvador better than most of the people who get off this plane. Many of the deported men were children when their parents took them to Los Angeles. The returnees are free men. But the police still want to know who is or has been a member of the 18th Street Gang and the MS Gang in America. They've asked him to pull up the shirt and they're just checking his tattoos. 25-year-old Manuel Rodriguez used to be in the MS Gang in Los Angeles. He'd been deported for car theft. 
Why did you go to the United States in the first place? My mom and my dad left uh, when I was four years old. And my brother was two, I think. And it was because of the war that was happening back then that my mom and my dad decided for me to, to leave over there with him. We gave Manuel a lift to the bus station. Manuel, what's going through your mind at the moment? I don't remember none of it. Like, you know, like, I see it and I... Yeah, I can see the poverty, you know? Mm. He'd been born here, but it was a foreign country. At the bus station, he'd arranged to meet a cousin. The plan was to travel into the countryside. Manuel was desperate not to become part of San Salvador's gang wars. But San Salvador is full of people who can't escape the gangs. Ellie Rosales Garcia and her husband Tony were brought up in Los Angeles. Their children even have American names, Brian and Jenny. In Los Angeles, Tony was a member of the 18th Street Gang. He was deported here in 1998 after being involved in a drive-by shooting. This year he managed to get work in a factory. It was meant to be a new start. When did you last see him? 15 days ago. That was the last time I saw him. He's with the gangs, I think. Right now he's in the streets again. Drug is killing him. He's smoking crack right now. He's so skinny. But at this time, I don't know if he's dead or he's still alive. Are your children worried? Yeah. Yeah, because every time they ask me, is my dad coming tonight? And I don't have an answer. That night, we helped Ellie and some friends search for her husband. But none of the 18th Street Gang lookouts would admit to having seen him. Nor was he among the crack addicts that litter the streets. We continued searching. Ellie was convinced he was with the gang somewhere. But the certainties of gang life had won out over the grind of a badly paid job. We never found him. Ellie went to the police station to report him missing. The gangs are destroying family life and there'll be a whole new generation of fatherless children to recruit from. Since we filmed, Tony has contacted Ellie. He's told her he's staying with the gang. Gang culture is spreading far outside San Salvador. We were 200 miles from the capital in Oriente, the eastern province. We're on police patrol and we're about to go to a rural area where violence it's so intense that half the families there have abandoned their homes and fled. Culprits are local gangs modeled on the 18th Street and MS gangs. The police were constantly on guard against ambush. Our destination was the village of El Changuite. For 10 miles around, we hadn't seen a single person. This is a former family homestead, but 
a little boy was killed here and that's why this whole area is so deserted. After his murder, people in the area just fled to the nearest villages. They couldn't cope anymore. 13-year-old Gabriel Graulos was kidnapped from this house, held for ransom and then murdered. It was the final straw for people already living in terror of the gangs. The child's shoes abandoned like everything else here when the, the parents fled with their other child. And there's a teddy bear. the area school but as you can see there are no children most of the villagers have fled to the slums of San Salvador the price paid on the world market for their coffee crops has collapsed so there's little to stay for we found Gabriel's parents hiding on the outskirts of a nearby town they won't let the surviving child out of their sight Ocurrido, pues el niño pues murió de una puñalada que estoy aquí, en esto aquí del una, ah, una puñalada aquí, sí. sí. Luego pues a él rociaron gasolina. They said their son was stabbed to death. He was then covered in petrol and burnt. And this is after they had sold all their possessions, everything they'd owned, to raise a ransom of one thousand dollars. But it didn't matter because he was killed anyway. And they only found him about three days after he'd been killed and burnt. And at that stage, the crows were eating his body. Aquí este fenómeno es nuevo. Es nuevo. Is this new? This phenomenon. Aquí yes. es nuevo. Tal vez habrán sucedido algunos que otros más con señores ya de edad que se han quedado así. He said this is a completely new phenomenon, kidnapping children of working class families. But he said it's going to spread because here there's no justice on this earth. He says what we believe in is divine justice. That's the only justice there is for us. I knew that the nearby town of Sultan was where Manuel Rodriguez, the deportee at the airport, was sheltering. She knows you were deported. Yes, yeah, she knows I was deported. He was in his grandmother's house. She's away, working in America. Now I'm just thinking about going back, you know. Manuel was scared. I'm gonna make it back. The MS and 18th Street gangs were fighting to control the town. The violence was more intense than anything he'd known. I don't want to get into any trouble. That's, that's why I'm not, I'm not going, you know, to the party. He told me he wore bandages on his arms to hide his MS tattoos. Do you think you can get into trouble here without looking for it, just by yeah. being here? Yeah. There was constant like gunfire. This. Yeah, I think so. And who's got the gun? I don't know. Everybody in this country has a gun. Mm -hmm. Except us. I know, yeah. I go like this with both hands bending all the time. And what do people think? They look at me crazy. Like, like my friend asked me what happened to me. I told him that I burned myself on the kitchen that we had. So even your friend doesn't know? They don't know that I got tattoos in my hands. Manuel, as a former MS gang member, was in more danger than he knew. In the morning, not far from Manuel's house, we encountered a member of the rival 18th Street gang. Safe here. He helped run a weapons factory, he told me, and he could prove it. This is a model that they make in the house. It's manufactured with widely available sort of pipes. They weld it together. This is a 38 caliber bullet. He said MS haven't come to our house, but down there, that's their territory, so that's why they have to be able to defend themselves. A few miles away in San Miguel, the local capital, schools were protesting against gang violence. Will Salgado, the city's mayor, has been accused of using more robust methods. A few years back, he was cleared by the courts of funding a death squad called the Black Shadow. Its purpose? To execute gang members. This is the mayor when he was younger, when he was in the army. He's been elected because people around here respect his hardline views. Is it true that Black Shadow killed gang members? 
sí existió, incluso yo estuve acusado de 30 homicidios. He said, yes, it existed. I was accused of killing 30, 30 gang members here in San Miguel. Entonces, la gente busca, eh, quiere, pide, por decir así, que se haga justicia de cualquier forma. People are coming here looking for someone with enough courage and guts to continue with extrajudicial killings. Bueno, la epidemia sí se terminó y los que eran delincuentes... His message was simple. He said, if the gangs were an epidemic, then the black shadow was a cure. A bullet in the head is a traditional Salvadoran cure. But in the capital, the authorities are trying some alternative medicine. This is Mariona, the high security prison where many gang members convicted of violent crimes are held. It was built for 800. There are 3,000 crammed into it. El Salvador can't build prisons fast enough. Yeah. The prison governor said there was one absolute rule. This says in Mariona in this prison, Jesus is the boss. And he meant it. Preachers roamed the exercise yard, calling on prisoners to turn to the Lord, competing to save souls. Everywhere I turned, there seemed to be a church. It's like this is Catholic, see? This is the Catholic church. is latched on to is that religion offers gang members a family, a home in a hostile world, just what they seek from the gangs. The prison had the air of a revivalist mission. There's no similarity in the moral values of Christianity and the gangs, but both offer people who think they're nobodies the chance to become somebodies. You know, for being in here, this prisoner, a deportee from America, told me God now gave him everything his gang had, without the downside. You were a gang member, were you? Yeah, so I used to. Yeah. I used to be from 18th Street. But not anymore? Not anymore. I got tattoos in my body, in my back of my head. And I got, I got nothing good, you know, from the gangs. I don't know how many gang members turn to religion. But visiting there made me realize that everything I'd seen in El Salvador was the cry of people looking for an identity to stop them feeling outsiders in their own world. Outside, I went on patrol with the police again. It might seem as if all of this is unique to El Salvador, and up to a point it is. Across the world, many others are also searching for identities that offer a sense of belonging in an indifferent world. That's why, as the 21st century begins, so many countries face unrest, revolt and civil war. <laughs>